a remarkable return to St. Croix U.S. Virgin Islands to generate interest in the field of agriculture and conservation, primarily among the youth. A partnership between the USDA Natural Resources Conservation Service and James Amps of Amps International is designed to not only introduce high school and college students to this now high-tech industry, but teach them how to build a business. Chief Terry Cosby of the USDA Natural Resources Conservation Service and his counterpart Vivian Dixon is behind approving tens of thousands of dollars for this impactful initiative. Our world is focused on the building of relationships. Do you think it's all about what you know? You think it's all about your education? Somebody says, well, I got a college degree. Well, good for you. What are you doing with it? I talk to a lot of folks who have college degrees who are unemployed. Why? Because they never knew what they wanted to do. You have a chance now, under what we call entrepreneurship and being more creative, to really think about what it is that you want to do. I can just tell the energy in the room is really incredible. Um, looking out to the participants, the children, you know, I see excitement. For me, it, um, also giving the children an opportunity to know the local resources that, that are available. The idea is for participants to hear from the owners in agriculture themselves and build a business around solving a problem. We are back in St. Croix for the second time. We were here last year and we decided to come back because the NRCS, National Resources Conservation Service, allowed us to do a second trip in St. Croix and then one in Puerto Rico. This initiative is more important than the first one because we have some of the folks who graduated from the first retreat who are now in this retreat as senior participants and helping to move those groups uh, along uh, so that they can build their businesses. Mr. Chichester is a fruit collector, and so he's gotten fruits on this property from all over the world. There are so many fruits worldwide that can be grown here for fruit, for juice, for cooking, for export, you know, a number of things. And these, these, these guys are going to be exposed to a number of stuff they've never heard about. What have you learned about just in the few minutes that we've been here on this orchard? That they have many different types of type of fruits with seeds on the outside that you that you could actually use, like mountain apples and what was the next one? Pineapples. Pineapple is one of them fruits. And I was like, what? I thought like strawberry or berries would be the type of answer, but no, he said different types. And I'm only seeing, since I only live on St. Croix, never got any place else, I've only seen these types. So we're really truly hearing about different types of fruits. They're very, very cool. The primary challenge for us here, as I said again, is there. Some second challenge, maybe may not be the challenge for you guys on the mainland, is supplies. Irrigation supplies, fertilizer, pesticide and stuff. Everything we have to bring in here. The cost is outrageous because you have shipping, you have the cost of the product, plus shipping, plus when you need a product, it may not be available because it takes time to get it. The students participating in the AMPS Entrepreneurship Leadership Institute retreat also getting a history lesson at a cattle farm that's been in the area since the 1800s. We had a herd of cattle and uh, from that we developed a breed that was actually started in St. Croix with cattle that came here from Senegal, West Africa in about 1860 that we call Senegalese. We know the real name. And then one of our dairy farmers here in, in about 1915 started crossing those cattle with a breed from England called Red Pole. And that breed has no horns, all red in color, good milk production. But the breed from Senegal with Africa had a heat tolerance for our environment. And now our breed is popular in over 20 countries, from Vietnam to Australia, to South Africa to Brazil, Venezuela, Colombia, Panama, Guatemala, all started here in St. Croix. I am it. I do that. I do the accounting. I do the managing. I do the buying. I do the Jack all that stuff. Right? Yeah, you don't want any help doing that. Nice. <laughs> Very much. We've, the yeah, Arlene Ace who works with us, she's always the one who gets pulled in when uh, he or I needs something. But yeah, love to have your name and number. And yep. That's the business. That's the business you come up with, right? The students are broken up into teams to compete for a pitch competition for investment dollars. 
In about 30 hours, they learn everything from creating a logo and company name to crunching the numbers. But most of all, how to reach customers. Know your audience. Who are you talking to? Now all of you say, ta-da. All of you, ta-da. Ta That's T-A-D-A, target audience design approach. Always know who you're talking to. When I get to Atlanta, I already know who I'm talking to. I'm not even there. And then I design my presentation based on my audience. This is an intensive retreat. So it's important to not only eat right, but relax, instilling the discipline of balance in their work ethic. So we're gonna press one foot with this one. It's gonna go in between, your, in between our legs. The climax of the AMS Entrepreneurship Leadership Institute retreat is the pitch competition, which is judged by locals vested in the industry. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Project Green. Project Green, a green tomorrow. Project Green's mission statement is to promote volunteering and most of youth within the Caribbean and to encourage them to learn more about agriculture and to help better the communities while learning more about it. Our goal is to make a better society, right? We want to become and show green. We want, that's what we're getting volunteers about. We're getting volunteers in the community so that we can make a green tomorrow. So this project that we've decided to come up with here today doesn't end in this year. So by the end of the year, we hope to build our first garden in one of the project home communities and to start a, a, to get a relationship with our other community. Have you decided which community you will start with with your garden? Yes, um, there's a community on St. Thomas. It's a, I don't like to use the word projects, but it's a disadvantaged community. It's near Yacht Haven. I'm not sure of the exact name, but we would like to incorporate a garden in that community, and um, Ajiba has the other community. The other community is here in Croy, and is the one that I live in. Once we start this organization, it can really help the, the kids in that environment, because growing up, looking at my peers, and observing the way that they act, they, they are less motivated because there aren't enough organizations, and they're like thrown in their face for them to know, like, you're more than just a child in a project. You're more than just a child in a low-income environment. There's something out there for you. You could be more than your environment. Welcome, STAT staff. You want me to ask you something? What exactly is STAT? STAT stands for Student Technology and Agriculture Training. The service that STAT is providing is internships and programs. The people we are searching for is farmers, youths, and of course sponsors. St. Croix has always been potential. We have the land, we have the climate, we have the farms, we have the soil. If anything happens to mainland, if any crisis happens, shipment does not come to St. Croix. That is a crisis that we need to get a hold of. Really remember, as you strive for excellence, success, failure, and greatness, do it Let's check out Farmer Ziggy. And our project is called Farmer Ziggy. Our goal is to help change the belief and values of young people about agriculture. We're more of a brand. We want to Basically, working going to put our logo and stuff like that on t shirts and pants and basically pretty much everything, you know, anything that we can put our brand on. Project Zindi, we um, started an Instagram page just a couple of days ago, no, actually yesterday, to see if this could actually work. And 
as you see so far, after the first three hours, we have over 50 followers with just the first post. So we know this is doable, um, and we know that we can. Our long-term goal is to hit 1 million followers on all social media platforms and expand across the whole of the Virgin Islands. I see that you said um, you're going to start with Instagram. Mm -hmm. What about for the older farmers? How are you going to get, what platform are you going to use for them? Because not everyone uses social media. What we intend to do to start out is we want to visit our local farmers that don't have Instagram and TikTok and everything that you said, all the social media platforms. And we want to, because nobody knows about them because they don't have those, so we want to put them on the map utilizing our Instagram page. We will put their name, the name of their farm, and their location, give a tour of their farm, show people where they can buy their products from, and kind of boost them. They don't have to have a page. We do the work for them. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Desania Stevens, and I am the Chief Operations Officer. Good afternoon, everyone. I am, I am Giant James, and I am the Chief Marketing Officer of Green Outlet. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Amari Bartley, and I am the Chief Financial Officer of the Green Outlet. Green Outlet was created to engage our young generation in the pursuit of food, sovereignty, and security. As per the Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations, 97, 97 of our food on the Virgin Islands is imported. This leaves us at a significant risk if anything were to happen within the global food supply chain. This is our website that is currently happening. So the first thing that you're going to see when you open our website is, of course, the name, uh, our slogan, where we produce the food. We have three separate things that we're focusing on most in our organization, which is fertilizer, organic produce, and community involvement. The yearly income statement for the total revenue of $80,000, gross profit of $56,000, and net surplus of $54,000. The imports, though, they're not getting anything. They are our direct competitors because they will not be profiting off of us because we are going to have everything that we need right here on this island. We will grow it organically. Um, it just sit in your poop. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just wanted to know what the plan was for harvesting, processing, and, and distributing. So our goal is to have scientists, and the scientists will collect, harvest, and test that poop and make it into a healthy, organic fertilizer for our plants. talked about it. doesn't matter how many degrees you have who do you know and who knows you that's key degrees are good all right you 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 you, 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 you check mark that I've got that they can't take it away from me but then where do you want to go just to work for somebody just to pay your bills or do you want to do what you actually love to do and that's the key so my motto's always been if you want something you've never had you've got to do something that you've never done I would drop the mic but we'd have to pay for it <laughs> Y'all give yourselves a hand. 